everybody. Here we have a little desk lamp that is in need of a little bit of repair. It's an American one. I've had it for quite a few years now. Um, at this stage I don't know whether it's 6 volt or 12 volt. Um, it's one I sorted out, out of the other box of junk I got upstairs and it didn't work so I thought well I'll have a little look at it and see what has gone wrong. By listening to the bass when it was plugged in and turned on it would hum so it was telling me that there was juice getting to the transformer but we weren't getting anything to the lamp itself. Anyhow as you can see you've got the name down here it's made by a company called Tensor and it's not Chinese. This was before the Chinese crap came over. Um, it's made in USA. It's got the two safety standards on there. It takes a lamp number 1133. 120 volts. It's the Tensor Rumford model 6975. It's a Tensor Corporation, Brooklyn, New York. Genuine American made lamp. It looks quite a good quality one. One thing I had to do was to modify the screws. There's two screws that go in there and they're ones with the most peculiar slot. Out of all my screwdrivers there wasn't one with that slot. It's quite old as you can see by the plug. It's one of the early plugs where the, the wires are terminated under big fat screws underneath and it's also a non-polarised plug and it's not grounded either so that's an old plug. Excuse the paint splashes on it. Now have a look out inside I've got an idea what has prob probably gone wrong. Let's turn him over have a little look see what we've got. We've got the transformer which is quite a hefty size transformer in fact it takes the whole size of the case itself. You've got the switch at the top it's too light level and it's nice because it's actually switched on the main side. Some of these lamps particularly the ones made elsewhere are only switched on the low voltage side which means the transformer is always connected to the mains. And as you see it's a quite an old looking transformer. That glue and muck on there was some pieces of brown sticky paper that was on there. But as we can see it looks like the wire that goes to the low voltage lamp goes through a little black thing and I'm pretty sure under there we're going to find a fuse. So what I'm going to do is remove that see if there is a fuse on it. If so we will replace it with a fuse of the same value and put it all back and hope it works. Right we've removed the two wire nuts little plastic wire nuts in England they're called screw-its they have got another name which is a little bit rude which I won't tell you here but let's suffice to say they are a very convenient way of joining the wires together. The American ones are invariably made of plastic whereas the English ones were made of a sort of a porcelainy material. Anyhow we're going to have a look at the fuse. The fuse is, is between those two twists. The fuse link has now been removed and we've got to get inside to see who it is that that's gone. It might not be that it looks like it's made by a company called Tunyon. I have come across its name before. I must admit I'm more familiar with the English makes of fuses but I think Tunyon is probably one of the American well-known well -known names. 
Ah, the sleeving is one of these shrunk sleeves so I'm going to have to slice it down with a knife to just see if it is the fuse that's gone. There's no current rating on there but um, if there's not a current rating we will work out a sensible rating to use. Right, the easiest way of testing whether the fuse has blown is to use a meter. Touching the two probes together, full scale deflection. Let's go across the actual unit or the fuse, and I'm going to have to tie up one end first. So let me put that down. Right, we're back again. The fuse is connected to the two probes, and the meter is reading zero. So we'll prove the fuse is open circuit, it's blown. Right, what we want to do next is, is to check that there's not a short in the feed up to the lamp itself. Because if that, if that has shorted out some way, that would have caused the fuse to blow. There's always a reason why a fuse blows. So this is what we're going to check next. Check that there's not a short circuit between the black wire going into the lamp and the outer casing. Take my word for it, it's difficult to demonstrate and try and film at the same time. There is not a short between the black wire going into the lamp and the metal base, so it's um, there's no problems there. Also we tested continuity between the black wire and the centre contact in the little holder. So that part is all okay. The next stage is to ascertain what the current rating was of the fuse. The fuse removed from the, out, the outer sheathing and I think we can see it is definitely blown. It looks like it could be a 5 amp fuse. There is a 5 on the side of the on one of the ends it's very corroded very difficult to see definitely looks like 5 amp which sounds to me like a sensible rating it would obviously go with a with a direct short across it and now we're going to go down to the box of fuses and find one to replace it with or we'll solder a couple of new wires on it and join it all back. To be on the safe side the fusing obviously has to be correct we want to make sure it will blow in the event of a short. Now most of these lamps or most of these lamps that I've seen have always been 12 volt but there's no voltage on the actual lamp itself. The original bulb I no longer have so I assumed it was going to be a 12 volt 21 watt but I thought well let's just have a quick look in the catalogue and see what that number brings up and when I look at it I see double one double three it's a single cap bayonet volts 6.2 so it's actually a 6 volt job you've got your current rating there 3.91 amps the fuse that was in there I believe was a 5 amp fuse which would be a sensible size to use so we would get away with using a 5 amp fuse so you've got a little bit of leeway of a couple of amps So it's worth checking these things. In England you always get the voltage and the current information like that is always on the bulb. But I know in America they go by a number. And fortunately I had the catalogue that had that number on it. It's double one, double three. It's the catalogue of GE catalogues dated 
1983. Speciality lamps. International Lighting Department. So, 5 amps. We'll put a 5 amp fuse in. I've got a box of fuses. Just a few. So I'm sure we can sort out something in that box which will work. It might pay me to even put a, de a delay action fuse in. But we will have a look at the box. One 5 amp fuse ready to go. Right, unit ready to be assembled in the case. It's all neatly put back. Well insulated, I want it shorting on the case. So I'll put it away and see if it works. The one completed tensile lamp. I did in fact have to alter the fuse arrangement. The 5 amp wasn't heavy enough. So it's now got a 7 amp fuse, but that is due to the lamp that I've got to use here because I haven't got one of the correct ones so obviously this one is a higher wattage so I've got to watch I doesn't overheat but for all intents and purposes the 5 amp fuse should suffice the other one that I've done anyhow that's the end of this this is the other one that I've um, done so hopefully all will be okay thank you for watching any comments please make Sorry about the phone ringing, but these, these things do happen. It adds to the interest. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe. Please pass comments. And thank you again.